Welcome to Behind the Lines. I'm Diane Dayton. Today we're going to talk about the Lancaster County Office of Aging and everything that it's providing for our community. With us right now, we have the Deputy Director of the Office of Aging. We have Kristen Jones. Good Thanks morning. for being here, Kristen. Thank you. And we have Robin Work, Ombudsman. That's right. Which we're going to find out exactly what that is, too. <laughs> thank you for both being here. Yes, this is such you. an important topic to talk about because the Office of Aging, we have such an aging population in the country but also in the county as well. If we look at some of these statistics from way back, what, 1960, it was 16.6 million older adults. 2015, it's up to 47.8 million older adults. And what do we consider an older adult, Kristen? For the Lancaster County Office of Aging Services, it's 60 and above. Okay. There is uh, some exceptions for our senior centers that serve um, individuals in the county and also for certain in-home service programs but for the most part we consider an older adult 60 and above okay hope that doesn't surprise anyone okay. <laughs> <laughs> well what I find really interesting are all the services that you do provide and that's the purpose of the show today because we want to give out information and resources mm -hmm. for everybody who needs them and all of us will need it at some point <laughs> so Robin what is an ombudsman ombudsman that is a <laughs> A Swedish word that stands for citizen representative so it means that we are a resident rights advocate for those in long-term care okay all right so let's start at the beginning if there is a beginning somewhere <laughs> um, the Office of Aging what are some of the basic first things that we need to know that you provide for okay. all the older well, adults? the first uh, service or department that individuals come into contact through our agency is our information and referral department and that's a department that answers basic questions about our in-home services, general resources for individuals who are older and their families in the county, and just really is able to be staffed with individuals who hear the needs and try to provide information. They're available by telephone, email, and also through our website. Okay, so let's get into the crux of all of okay. this because there are a lot of different services. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, Give me some examples. Okay. Well, um, I guess one service that people ask us about a lot is our ability to assist with in-home services. We do have programs uh, where we can provide certain services to those who qualify. We can provide personal care and at times assistance with things like uh, financial assistance with home delivered meals, with certain types of supplies that are not covered by insurance. We can assist with the um, fees for adult day services where mm -hmm. someone might need more assistance um, outside of the home for a caregiver to okay. have someone cared for. There are also our caregiver support program, which is reimbursement for individuals who are caring and paying out of pocket for their loved one. All of our services do have eligibility, and that is um, because our agency is basically trying to be a provider of last resort, a payer of last resort. Okay. Our services are not always free. We look at an individual's income, assets, and we do pro uh, require documentation proof of that for eligibility and also a functional need that they need to uh, require hands-on assistance. Okay, so some of the personal care things yes. would be what? Uh, bathing, dressing, hands-on assistance with that. Um, if the individual is not uh, having someone else in the home who can do that for them, then they might also be eligible for something like uh, laundry and shopping. Okay. So when we talk about eligibility, it yes. has to do with financial situation? Yes. Okay. And also functional. functional. A person has to have a, um, a need for a certain number of um, activities of daily living. The things you and I would take for granted, you know, that we can do quite easily. Um, assistance getting up and down, using the restroom, taking care of dressing, those types of things. Okay, so to get a hold of you, you mm -hmm. just, what, call the office <laughs> or stop by the office? Or? You can do all of those okay. things. Um, we are available. That's always important when we do this type of outreach. We want people to know how to find us. Mm -hmm. uh, you can call us on the telephone, 717-299-7979. We have live receptionists, oh, which good. we're very proud of <laughs> because we want people to feel heard. Right. Um, then those individuals route the calls to the appropriate department. We are a very busy office, so there is often a wait time to hear back, um, but certainly we have the 
information and people will get back to you. You can also reach us on our website and you can also reach us by email or a referral form that is available on our website. Okay. And in getting a hold of you, sometimes it feels yes. like it's a last minute panic call. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's like something has happened that you didn't even anticipate. <sighs> and <laughs> help, where do you go? I mean, that... That never happened. No. <laughs> <laughs> so address that. I mean, I know we have also worked with Office of Aging. Uh, my family has worked okay. with. Okay. And it, it was one of those things. It was like all of a sudden, oh, we mm -hmm. need help and services here and never thought about it before. Mm -hmm. You can get a little prepared prior to, though, can't you? You can. Um, you can get prepared by provide, you know, gathering information early. We uh, take in the information and referral unit of our office resource information, trying to help people know where to go to look for care, whether they're paying for a pocket, screening them for eligibility for our services. As far as emergency calls or those, oh my gosh, yeah. help, that's what our receptionists are trained to do. They are really invaluable because they're screening those calls and they're trying to prioritize. So somebody, if an individual calls and has a more urgent situation, mm -hmm. it would be sent to someone to screen that situation right. and more of a priority. And I forgot to say, you can stop by our office okay. at 150 North Queen Street. We're on the fourth floor of the Lancaster County Government Building, and we do have walk-ins okay. where people can just come. Wow, that's great. That makes you go, sneak <gasps> that in there. <laughs> you know, really. So, Robin, what does an ombudsman do? Well, one of the things that we do is we are a presence in all of the long-term care facilities in Lancaster County quarterly. So every three months we go and visit um, unannounced, we just walk in and we eyeball people, we ask questions, we talk to the residents, see how folks are doing, if they have any concerns or any needs that um, they need met. And we give them, you know, information um, to contact us. We give them information on their resident rights. A lot of times people, when they move into a facility, feel that they've given up everything, mm. including their rights. So it's real important that we remind them that you do have a lot of rights and those need to be observed. And you are really an advocate. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. If there's a, a resident um, that wants something looked into, we have to have their consent. If we see something that bothers us, we're not mandated reporters. Um, so it's all about the resident and we have to get consent from the resident too. If they're having a problem, um, speak to their social worker, speak to their family, speak to um, somebody else and the, the director of nursing, depending on what the concern is. Um, okay. And then we go from there. So when you talk about a patient's rights, mm -hmm. what does that really mean? What is well, that? Uh, um, the right to being heard. The right to being heard. The right to addressed. choose. I mean, as simple as you have the right to choose what you wear that day. Okay. All right. Um, it's not what staff pulls out for you to wear, which okay. happens a lot of times. Um, you have the right to choose what you want to eat. Like mm. there needs to be alternatives on the menu. You know, if you don't like meatloaf, there has to be something else that's nutritious that you can you can order. Um, you have the right to sleep in. I am looking forward to that one myself. <laughs> um, you know, you don't have to be woken up at six o'clock mm -hmm. for blood okay. work. You don't have, if you'd like to um, attend an activity, but physical mm -hmm. therapy is saying, well, no, you really need to, because we need this requirement. And if the resident would prefer to be in the activity or to go get their hair done, that's their right. Okay. That's good to know. Yeah. And Robin, you've been in long-term care for, what, over 20 years, I believe, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And Kristen, what, over 26? Mm -hmm. At the Lancaster County Office of Aging. Wow. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you both have an inside view mm -hmm. of what goes on, inside and, and outside, and how it works together to make a big difference. Mm -hmm. yes. What I find interesting is the aging population in Lancaster County. What do we have, like 90 long-term or something like that facilities? Mm -hmm. We have around 90 long-term care facilities. And then we also have, I believe it's around 85 um, domiciliary care homes and um, adult day centers. We're also um, a presence in those as well. Tell me what those are. Well, a dom care home, a domiciliary care home is, is like a like a group home. There's no more than I think three or four individuals okay. um, 
in in there and they, they go to work or they have volunteer work that they do but you know because they are um, a population that needs support and you know some okay. guidance you know we, yep. we help out with there okay. as well. Now there's a website mm -hmm. right Kristen what is that and what are we going to find there? Okay well I was worried about this I thought I should have made sure I memorize it but <laughs> it's um, www.lancoaging.com no, nope, see. Well, I'm you gonna... know what? We're going to put that on the screen <laughs> later, <laughs> and we'll bring it in the next segment I've, when we figure it I out. I promise too. you that I know the website. Well, you know what? But I, I just can't think can, of it right now. We can actually Google it. You know? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. We can Google it too. But the thing is, you are easy to access. We can find you in some way, shape, or form, mm -hmm. and you're easy to relate to. And I love the fact that you actually have real people answering the phone. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because, especially with an aging population, too, trying to figure out some of those push, press this, press that, mm -hmm. and go to this, it really is frustrating and can add to some of the anxiety that I think mm -hmm. is a part of what the situation is, even when you're calling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. also not great for someone who might have a you know hearing deficit or other issues that might face us as we get older. Yeah. I'm going to say I believe our website is www.lancoaging.org. Okay. I don't know why I hesitated. Well, that's all and right. on that our website, okay. you can find um, all resource information. You can find information about our services. You can make an in-home service referral or request to speak to someone. You can also um, find information about our senior centers. Mm -hmm. We have nine of them, uh, including a virtual senior center. So you can find out how to sign up for those. You can find out about all of the programs there. Wow, that sounds great. And we're going to talk about some of those programs mm -hmm. right after this break. So stay with us. You really don't want to miss that. There's a lot to offer. LCTV 66 is your community channel, and your donations keep us on the air and help to produce more local programs. Send your tax-deductible donation of $500, $100, or more to the address on the screen. Or think of it this way. For the price of a couple of movie tickets, you can help support your community channel. Send what you can and be a part of all that is good about Lancaster County. Thank you for your tax-deductible donation to LCTV 66, Lancaster's Connection. Welcome back to Behind the Lines. We're talking about the Lancaster County Office of Aging, along with Robin, who is an ombudsman. Okay, I just can say that word, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and also Kristen, who is the deputy director of the Office of Aging. One of the things you wanted to talk about in the facilities, there's a poster, right? Yes, that's all facilities, long-term care facilities are mandated to have our information, and which is currently, we have a real large poster that's uh, blue and it comes in English and Spanish. It has all of the contact information for us. So, you know, don't be concerned if your senior is in a facility and you don't think that they can get the contact information. It should all be there and they should be able to get that information from their social worker as well. Okay, that's great. So some of the things that I know you're working on getting back after the pandemic, mm -hmm. the 55 plus employment workshop, mm -hmm. right? Yes, um, our agency has an employment program. Um, that's one of the services I mentioned that might be for individuals under 60. It's okay. 55 and above. Uh, one part that we're hoping to revive um, once we get the right uh, staff person and interest is the uh, 55 plus employment workshop. Uh -huh. And that's where they just um, have somebody who's leading that group and working on resumes, mm -hmm. applications, and trying to assist people in uh, learning more about finding a job. It's also the way that we um, find individuals who would be eligible for our 55 plus job bank mm -hmm. and our senior community employment program. Those okay. are two other parts of our 55 plus job um, employment program. That's a great service. Mm -hmm. it, it really is. Absolutely is mm -hmm. because you can connect with the community so well that absolutely. way. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. The job bank is sort of a matching program in okay. which we gather information if anybody's out there looking for employees. We can do basically a free advertisement. If you're looking for an employee, put it into our job bank, the basic job description, and then an individual who's 50 and five and above looking for work enrolled in our program can then be given that job announcement. Oh, that's and that's great. a way for them to find employees. And you know, you look at the older worker, there's so much experience mm -hmm. there and untapped. Uh, I think for some employers, it really Absolutely. is a good, really good uh, place. Mm -hmm. We also talked briefly earlier about the personal care with this, like bathing and dressing and yes. grooming. It's a part of too. The home support is really key too, isn't mm -hmm. it? 
It is. Um, that's something that we're not, that needs to be tied to someone with a personal care need. And again, that they have um, no other individual available to do that for them. And the reason we do that and why we cost share and might ask people to um, contribute to the cost of their actual cost of in-home care is so that we can use our funds to be able to serve more people. Yeah. So we're talking about home delivered meals. We're talking yes. about uh, grocery shopping, laundry, personal emergency response system. Mm -hmm. You know, falling is an issue, right? Yeah, <laughs> yes. there you go. <laughs> That's right. There's also adult day services. Mm -hmm. Adult day services are um, essentially locations where individuals who are in need of supervision or hands-on help during the day can go so that they can receive that care and supervision to free a loved one to do what they need to do or to work. And there's a cost involved because that's a skilled sure. uh, need. That's a skilled activity they're providing. Okay. There's also free transportation when someone is receiving adult daycare um, subsidy or assistance from All our right. office. This, I think, is so important, the health and wellness. Yes. And there are many things involved yes. with that. What aquatic fitness, mm -hmm. actually, go ahead and tell us more. Okay, well, our health and wellness is really something uh, that has grown over the years. And what we're finding is as much as we're serving older adults who are in need of assistance, there's also so many healthy and vibrant older adults mm -hmm. out there and they want things to do. Yes. And so we uh, try to have basically, I guess, um, outcome-based programs. So there's... Um, you know, programs that help people with nutrition. Mm -hmm. There's uh, programs that would help people with healthy aging. There's a caregiver uh, driven program that they have where they're actually providing um, instruction for caregivers as well as things that people love like pickleball <laughs> and, uh, yes. you know, the aquatics, mm -hmm. Tai Chi, yoga, we have a lot of that. And um, the people who run those departments, they're always looking for new ideas. Health and wellness is also responsible for um, our uh, senior games. Okay. The annual senior games. When is that? What time um, of the year? That is in May. That's going to be the first week of May this year again. Okay. And uh, we unfortunately, COVID didn't allow us to have it for two years in a row. We came back strong last year okay. and we're excited to do it again. So everybody save the date. Oh, that sounds <laughs> like a lot of fun. So there's all kinds of things in here, like you were saying, the senior games. Mm -hmm. There's even uh, Walk With Ease mm -hmm. with the Arthritis Foundation, Tai Chi for arthritis as well. But one of the things that I think is so important is caregiver support. Yes. Okay, who can address that? <laughs> <laughs> all right, go for um, it, Kristen. Our agency has... Uh, some basic information about um, caregivers where we have information about support groups and services, but we have an actual caregiver support program, which is a program through the Pennsylvania Department of Aging. And what that is, is it provides reimbursement for um, expenses that are paid out of pocket by a caregiver. So here I am at work. Mm -hmm. If I was caring for my mother and I qualified um, financially and she qualified because of her needs, then I would be able to pay someone to stay with her to provide okay. the care while I was at work. And then I could submit for reimbursement depending upon what I was approved for. And that would allow me to keep my mother at home longer. That's great. Mm -hmm. That's really good. So Robin, yes, who uses an ombudsman? We were talking about that and you know, uh, when should an ombudsman be brought in? Well, um, any resident in a long-term care facility um, who is over the age of 60 can use an ombudsman. Any family member. Any family member. If uh, a resident's family member has concerns about okay. the care or whatever, they can give us a call and we can investigate, go in and try to find some kind of resolution between we act as like the go-between the staff and, yeah. and the resident and their families. Okay, so when do you know, when to say when? Well, I think the most important thing is you can always call. You All can right. always call and talk to somebody. It doesn't mean that you're gonna be signed up for you know, uh, uh, an ombudsman to come out and, and start something. But if you have any questions at all, you know, I'm really concerned. I'm not sure if this is an issue but what can you tell me about that? And, you know, we're always ears 
for anybody that needs us. So you're the sounding board. You're the one that can give the information, can help educate, which I think is key, which is why we're doing what this is, yeah. to educate, to understand what resources are available. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when things do appear that you can not meander aimlessly, mm -hmm. but have a, a structure to get a result. Right, and we're right. like boots on the ground. We're in the field, the ombudsman are in the field most of the time, so. Yeah. How, always. how many people do you have in the Office of Aging? This seems like this is a monumental <laughs> task. We have about 75 employees at the wow. Office of Aging in various roles. Okay. And of course, um, so providing the services that mm -hmm. we discussed, but also support, you know, yeah. clerical, fiscal, sure. all of those types of things. And I should also mention, um, Robin, you were talking about how these are rights issues mm -hmm. and how you're asking um, for assistance and guidance. There are some times that these types of concerns in nursing homes and the community rise to the level of abuse. Yes. And I do want to mention that our agency does screen for protective services, okay. which are concerns about abuse, neglect, exploitation, or abandonment of adults over the age of 18. We investigate those 60 and above. Um, okay. 18 to 59, those types of concerns are taken by our agency and then forward to another department that investigates them for that population. Okay. We have talked about a lot of things oh, so yes. far today. <laughs> We've given a lot of information. Is there something that you feel we haven't covered or something that you would make sure that we want to address before we wrap up? What do you think? I just always like people to know that we're out here. We find that um, really that's something that people aren't always aware. So to know where to find us okay. um, online, by telephone, in the office, and just know that we are there to answer questions. And you don't have to know why you called. That's what we always say. We'll figure it out. We'll oh, talk good. to you and listen <laughs> and give you the guidance you need. Okay. Do you need volunteers? We do need volunteers. Oh, please do. Then tell us what you need. <laughs> How do you well, need? Well, okay. we, we are in need of volunteer ombudsmen um, mm -hmm. who are volunteers that have that passion for serving the senior community. And they go through the same training process that the ombudsmen go through. And then they do some shadowing. And then they can go out and do facility visits um, as well. Okay. So what type of person would be good to do this? with somebody who cares about cares about the, the senior population. How difficult is the training if somebody's sitting there going, I wonder if I can do this? It, uh, it's, um, it's eight weeks of uh, one day a week, there's a, a class, and then okay. there's also um, self-directed things to do online through our uh, LMS, our learning okay. system. Um, and then again, with the, the shadowing, so it takes it takes about three months to be fully trained to be able to then go out and uh, be a, a, an ombudsman representative. And what would be the hours if someone wanted to volunteer to do that? They can do any time. As I mean, that's, little or as much, right? As little or as much, yeah. There's no mandatory okay. requirement for you have to do 20, you know, and it all depends on what comes up at the time. You know, you can have some some days where there doesn't seem like there's a lot, but then the next day makes up for it. And, we, you know. So every day is really different for you too, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. But you're making a huge difference in our community, mm -hmm. not just for the older community, but the families as well, because we're all a part of this. Yeah. Thank you so much for everything that you do in the community. It does make a difference. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for Thank being you for here. 24 seven, right? Yeah. <laughs> we do. <laughs> okay, thanks so much. Thank you. And thank you for joining us today too. I'm Diane Dayton with Behind the Lines, reminding you to look behind the lines. You might be surprised what you find. <laughs>